Hey everyone, it's Tiffany T here, and I am here with Mr. Century City, Adam Torres, and um, we're just doing an interview with him because he um, is getting interviewed for being an inspiring person that is doing amazing things in life. So um, I am so honored and I'm so ecstatically happy to be interviewing you, Adam, and it's such a pleasure. And just, you know, Adam and I do the gratitude show together on Wednesday nights on Blab at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to ask him a few questions about life and his perspective. And um, he's basically an entrepreneur, a kick-ass entrepreneur. He has his, every, his hands in everything having to do with finance and entertainment. So, Adam, I'll let you go ahead and explain a little bit about who you are, what you're doing, and what you're up to. Sure. Well, uh, thank you, Tiffany. First of all, I have to say that I'm happy that uh, you asked me to interview. And I let me see. Do you have any feet? Do you have it? Is it going there? Or can you hear well? No, I can hear you fine. Okay, good. All right, let's put in this other one. No, I was so excited when you said that you were doing these series of interviews and just the thought process. Obviously, we know each other and we've been working on a couple of things together. But as I get to know you more and as I get to see how engaging you are with your audience and with people, it just you always bring something new to the table. You always bring something entertaining and you always, most importantly, bring something real. So everything Tiffany does is raw, <laughs> uncut. She's going to get to the bottom of everything. Uh, that's my, that's what I'm, I'm convinced of. Uh, so it makes for a lot of fun and it's always fun to be part of your projects and what you do. Um, myself, so like you said, entertainment and finance. I don't like to pigeonhole myself into one thing or another just because I always come up with new projects. My goal with this is to, so gratitude shows just one project. My goal there to spread gratitude, to just spread positive energy. Um, and then I, I have some more traditional business interests that aren't, let's say, focused on spreading gratitude. But that's the point is that we're all we're all multifaceted people. We have different sides. We have different likes, different wants, different needs. But the fun part and what I like about just what you're doing is that we don't have to put ourselves in a box. It's just saying, what do you want to do if you want to? There's people out there that say what? You have to make your passion your profession. And then there's people out there that say, no, that's crap because you don't make any money making your passion your profession. Well, I've seen people that have succeeded in both. So in my in my thought process and in my mindset, I don't I just say enjoy life and work hard towards what you want to do. That's all. And where that takes you. I mean, it can be completely different year one versus year two. I can say what I thought I'd be doing five years ago or 10 years ago is nothing compared to what I think I'll be doing in the next year or two or who knows the next month or two. You never know. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. That's my personality. And that's what I like to do. Love it. Love it. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I always have so much fun when you're on, on the blab with me. <laughs> um, okay. The next, oh wait, it looks like Dino is able to come on. Um, anyways, we'll just get to the next question. Um, so what's your perspective or your understanding um, of happiness in life? What does happiness so, mean to you? Absolutely. So happiness is a, you know, I think it's a pretty broad term. And I have, I, I like happiness, but then I also have some issues with happiness. So happiness to me is a feeling. Um, and when we think about feelings, if we just think of our makeup as human beings and not everybody's, you know, on board with me on this one. And I know we have, other, it's more complex than this, but I'm going to oversimplify. So, you know, we're filled with all these emotions. We're filled with these chemicals. I mean, it's, it's biology, it's chemistry, right? And so happiness, if we think about what some people would say, what is it? It's, uh, uh, serotonin, it's, uh, endorphins, it's, uh, uh, oxytocin, um, one other one I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but you know, all these chemicals and these reactions that go on in our body that make us feel a certain way. So for me, I, you know, I've always had such a hard time, like putting too much focus or too much credit on happiness, just because I know I'm fickle, like everybody else. I mean, use another word. I don't know if that one doesn't feel good to you, but I know I have, let's say, fleeting emotions. One moment I may be happy, the next moment for no reason whatsoever, I'm just not feeling it, right? So for me, happiness is more of like, a, think of it as a direction, like kind of like a North Star, if you will. Um, it's not saying it's the present, like we have to be in this state of being. And I know many people, and I'm probably wrong if you look at 
at, um, at spiritual studies, it may be a, a state of being, but for me, it's a direction. It's just saying, do I think if I'm trying to get from point A to point B, or if I'm heading in that direction, does it make me more happy or do I gravitate it more? And does it make me feel more good? Or do I have more bad times than good times? Because I don't think it's black and white. So I don't think it's just, you know, you're either happy or you're not happy. I think we have these different states that we go through. You can be happy and not happy at the same time. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but it happens. Um, so I look at it as a direction. And then if we break that down, so that's the direction as I, I, I look at it. And then when I look at it more specific, so does it have specific attributes? I mean, I'm going to go with no. I don't know. because. I think it keeps it, it evolves for me. I don't know that it has just this one attribute of saying, okay, I, cause I can tell you, I'll give you an example. So I've had moments in my life where I had a lot of money in the bank and I was, you know, not happy. Or when I had a lot of money in the bank and I was happy. So is money the root of happy? I don't know. I just think it's an attribute to it. Um, I can tell you there's been times in my life when I've been single and I was happy. And then there's been times in my life when I was not single and I was not happy or happy or it doesn't matter. But the point is, is that we're constantly changing. So um, if we look at the attributes of it, I don't have that one down yet. Maybe somebody else does. I'm sure somebody else does. But I just look at it as how am I feeling at that time? And, you know, and, and am I heading in the right direction with it? Awesome. I love that you use the word fickle. <laughs> I haven't heard that in years. <laughs> Did I oh. date myself? Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, and it's odd awesome too because you um, are a big, a big advocate of the secret as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I first met you, I haven't, I didn't ever meet in my life anybody who's seen it more than me. Let alone you've seen it way more than I have. So world record holder <laughs> right here, this guy. Yes, you are. Woo woo. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I just think, um, just from doing these interviews, there's no wrong or right right answer you know it's different for everybody and you you portrayed that perfectly and really beautiful so i mean handsome oh you're so sweet <laughs> so okay on to my next question um what's your perception or idea or understanding of success like what does that mean to you Being so su success um see now this is where i was kind of fickle on my answer for happiness mm. i'm pretty definite on my answer for success so Success means this to me, and it's going to be something different for every person. Um, but I think success is very measurable. Um, I just think that everybody finds their different um, standards of measurement. So, for example, um, for me, money is a big standard of measurement for me. I don't know. I, I don't think it's necessarily um, a, a good or a bad standard. It's just one that I've chosen. Um, I don't think that has to be for everybody, but. It's something to me that it's concrete and that I can tell, um, you know, whether or not I'm moving forward or not. Um, not everybody wants to do that. I mean, but for me and my thought process, it works because it keeps me always searching for new opportunities. It keeps me always searching to meet new people. It keeps me always uh, searching to just expand myself, my thinking, my skill set, the way I process information. I think what some people do, um, it, and I don't know what measurement they may use, but I noticed that a lot of people um, combine the word uh, or those attributes of the supposed happiness and success, and they mash those together to where they're not necessarily a change. So then you hear statements, in my opinion, like, you know, um, um, certain things don't matter, whether it's money, whether it's wanting something, whether it's, I mean, I hear all kinds of ridiculous things and I'm not saying, I know I'm talking and bringing up money a lot, but that's, that's just my thought process. It can be whatever you want. But the point is, is that if you're, you know, settling and if you're, um, you know, kind of giving yourself, feeding yourself this happiness thought process, um, and just combining that with the ideology of success, um, I look at them as two different things. Like y you can look at somebody outwardly and you can say, are they a success? And I mean, in whatever they want to do, if you want to be a philanthropist, if your job is to, or if your goal to make a difference in this world is to, um, is to, you know, travel to wherever you want to do and volunteer for the rest of your life. I mean, if that's what you, if that, that's not easy. I'm not saying that's easy. Um, if that's what you feel is going to make you successful in achieving whatever your mission is, I'm all for it. But 
in the same respect, I look at success as it has to be something that stretches you. It has to be something that's uncommon. So it's not uncommon to, I mean, you volunteer once a week at a, at a, or once a month at a soup kitchen or at something. I'm sorry, you're not stretching yourself. You're not, don't, you cannot consider yourself a successful philanthropist, whatever, I'm, I, whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't feel that that's the case. I think to, to be successful in whatever you want to do, you have to be uncommon and you have to push the limits on whatever your goal or your dream is. Um, but it can't be by definition, if you're average in whatever you're doing, you're not successful. That's just the way I see it. I, that's, that's a really good perspective. So would you say that um, success to you is, is basically pushing yourself, making sure that you're getting measurable results? I mean, are you unhappy when you don't experience success? I don't think they're necessarily related. Okay, that's what I was probably so, going Yeah, I, well, I, and that's my point exactly, is that I don't think they're interrelated. I could be wrong, but for me, again, going back to, I have a very strong context theme in my life. So it's just a context, just as a, it's a personality attribute to where you may look to the past at past um, experiences. And that's part of the reason, uh, part of the way that you filter the world going forward and that you filter your experiences. So for me, that's a very strong theme in my life, and it always has been. Um, and that being said, so when I look at times in my life, I can't say that those two things are related because I've been, again, I've been successful at times by my own standard and measurements, and I wasn't happy. And I've had the opposite happen. So I really think they're separate because to me, if they're not separate, and I may be missing the connection, I mean, and maybe the connection spirituality, or maybe the connection something else. I don't know. Um, but if I'm, if there, if if you can have both and experience both emotions at the same time, then there's a contradiction there somewhere that just can't be. So I don't think they're related. Okay. So would you say that that it comes from within? Then it's not something that's really measurable. Happiness or success. Both. Success. I think success is definitely measurable. I think success is definitely measurable and it's based off of you doing something that's in common. Um, we can lower our standards, by the way, and trick ourselves and think that we're successful. We can do that. Like I said, my, my example, just to not stick and only talk about money, um, if, we, if you want to be a great philanthropist and give in the world and you volunteer once a month, an hour of your time, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying, please do that. Everybody do that. But I'm sorry, you're not a successful philanthropist. It's just not happening. You're not stretching yourself. You're not making yourself in uncomfortable in life. You're not really sacrificing what it takes to be successful in whatever that space is. My example, philanthropy or giving back. Um, so I'll give you an example. My mother. So my mother is a social worker for 40 years or so. I would say that she was very successful in her space. Um, she gave an uncommon amount of time over and above anything she was ever paid to do. I mean, literally buying things for she never, never reimbursed. Um, she worked with at risk youth. So she monetarily, I mean, she did OK, but she's a stretch of the imaginations in terms of the whole world. She's not successful monetarily. But was she successful? her space? Absolutely. She gave her life to a cause. I mean, that's being successful. Um, in my opinion, and obviously there's some that, that maybe choose the unit of measure. And for her, her unit of measurement was her kids. How many kids was she helping? And she counted them one at a time. So her approach was completely different than my approach. Her approach was um, bottom up. So, and both work by the way. So I'm not saying that one versus the other doesn't work. I think both effectively done work just as well, but her approach was more so, um, uh, helping one person that was then going to help another. So that multiplication factor, which I think is amazing. My approach is top down. So I'm more likely to give to a, to an organization or to help with the organizing of an or organization in order to create a platform for somebody like my mother to donate her time to. So both approaches work. You need both type of people um, but that would be my measurement of success and how it would work. And, and that's just, you know, again, because I talk a little bit about money because I enjoy talking about that. But that'd be to give you the other end of the space. I don't want people to watch this and just say, oh, that guy just talks about money. Uh, how's he doing the gratitude show? What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on here, Tiffany? T? Who are you putting in front of the camera? <laughs> people that just inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome.
<laughs> oh my gosh, so much fun. Okay, I love it when you talk about your mom. You just like light up. You're so blessed to have um, a mom like that. She seems like she's always paying it forward. Absolutely, awesome. she taught me. She taught me. I did. Yeah. I did a video on her, by the way. Oh my gosh, oh, you really? have to see it. You have to go on the YouTube channel and see it. It's so good. Oh, I had no. her talk about her career and other things. So I interviewed her. She's actually the only interview I've ever done, or the first interview I. I Maybe no, she's the she's the only interview I've ever done for the Gratitude Show, um, and she was talking about her perception of um, of uh, gratitude, what it meant, and how it played out in her career. You should really check that one out. It's really fun. I'll do that tonight. Awesome. I, 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 people have told me that's my best video, and I'm like, of course you're gonna say it's my mom. <laughs> right, and if she made you, I mean, but she fun. is no, but she's really good though. When you hear it, I even say in the video, I'm like, I stole all my material from her. <laughs> <laughs> that was my preference. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> well, that's good that you had her just do it. <laughs> well, at least I told her. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, okay. And last question, Adam. Um, what is the most profound thing that's happened to you this far in life? Wow. So you're going to laugh. It may sound kind of cliche. I mean, I don't, I don't, cliche is not even the word. I discover the internet. Like it's always been there. No, I'm serious. No, because I'm 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 very traditionally trained in finance, and I mean that's my background. So I'm a numbers guy. I mean I deal with very let's just say high end traditional business type problems. Let's say um, that being said, uh, it's only been like two years that I actually really discovered what the internet was. Maybe no, no you know what? A year and a half. I joined a mastermind. I paid like nine, ten thousand dollars to join. It and I got really super lucky because they were amazing people. Um, so I, my money didn't get taken, and I love it. And we're great friends, and they've taught me so much about everything I'm building. So I mean, it, invaluable. Love it. Got lucky. Just got lucky. But I really discovered the internet, though, and this whole other world and platform that just gives me this. The and social media. I didn't know. So, I mean, I didn't know social media either. Um, which is kind of strange to believe now. I, I had councils for this stuff for like major organizations and it's hilarious to me and just as consulting, not not paid or anything like that, but because I don't want to, but just to help. So getting back to that giving back portion, I'm trying to now bring, you know, various traditional businesses and things up to speed. Um, and that's just in my spare time for like an arts council I'm part of and just other things like that um, where, that I want to give back to. But really it's like, how in the heck did I not know that, but the internet, I just got on Instagram. I'm like, what the heck, what is this? And now I, um, I just love it. And it's allowing me to spread this message of gratitude and just um, life and to share with people way further than I ever thought it would. And just like meeting people like you, that would have never happened. And I, I just want to keep spreading that to people that, um, when you do the math, there's so many billions of people around, like in this world, just in general. And now we're so connected that really you can just be yourself, like literally just be yourself. Whatever you say, whatever message, whatever, however you want to deliver it. I mean, there's somebody out there that wants to hear it. There's somebody that you're going to connect to. Um, and it's just about consistency and doing it. And the most amazing thing is it not only fills them up, but it fills you up. Like that was a totally unexpected thing. I just want, I just started this stuff cause I had a lot I wanted to get off my mind that I couldn't get off my mind in my traditional world, let's say. So I just started going to this, going this route. And as that happens to say, it's the most profound thing that's happened in my life. It would be an understatement because it's completely changed the direction of my life already. I already know. So just little things like people, like friends I've met on Periscope. Like when I now travel, I have people all around the world that I can go visit. And I just have this really extended family of just people and it's out of nowhere. So it's completely changed my life. And I know it's just going to keep getting bigger and it's kind of overwhelming the enormity of it all to think about, but uh, <laughs> definitely profound. And the, the craziest thing for me is really is that it's just, to say it's just starting is such an understatement. It's like I haven't even turned on the laptop yet. That's how I feel. Like the laptop, I, I, if I just bought this new Mac and I'm like saying, okay, how far along am I? Like the, I haven't even gotten the Mac laptop. 
the, that apple delivered it to my door yet. That's where I'm at. I can just feel it, like just all of this bubbling up and it's getting bigger and bigger and I haven't even been left laptop out of the box yet that's the way i feel so that's the direction and it's just so much fun of it who would have thought i mean you and i are, are similar in the sense that we just got involved in social media i mean i didn't i actually understand what an instagram photo is now <laughs> i get it <laughs> and i mean i didn't get on Facebook until last September. I barely <laughs> checked my email like every five months. I don't know. <laughs> You're worse than me. <laughs> but our obsessive compulsive personalities means that we have to do it now because it's yeah. so good. It's just such an outlet and it's it, such a game changer. Well, and it's crazy too because you know, you're talking about being yourself and being authentic and you portray that so perfectly because when I first saw your videos when you um, asked me to, you know, check out your site and your YouTube channel and stuff. And I was like, whoa, like immediately, like this guy is amazing. Like, because you can tell how genuine you are and how real you are and people want to see that. They really do. And, you know, the internet to say it's just starting, that is scary because like, I, I heard we're going to be living in like a virtual world in like 10 years. Like we're not even going to have to like leave our house to go traveling or visit people or work or. <laughs> I mean, That's crazy. I mean, I'm just waiting. I just need this electric car to happen already because I just want to push a button and I want, I want it to just come get Uber is really good, though. But uh, but I just want it to all be done. Can you imagine when a, a little pod? Oh, I'll say this first on the on the uh, interview so I can be first. So we have this moment in time. So when the little <laughs> pod comes and picks you up and it doesn't have any windows and you get inside of it and then all you see is screens all around. And you automatically, your phone or whatever you, we happen to be carrying at that time, whether it's a watch or whatever, just syncs up with whatever pod you're in. It already knows where you're going. You're done. You can put it on a screen of like traveling in the south of France, or you can be in front of an ocean, or you can do whatever you want um, instead of uh, instead of um, being, let's say, limited to your surroundings that you're currently at. And then next step would be, wow, if, if these little pods don't don't need as much space as cars, then we can start reclaiming some of these roads and start, you know, building parks again. I mean, that's totally where it's at, like longer, longer term, hopefully in our lifetime, but it makes sense. So all of this roads and all this road work and infrastructure and expanding, it's all already overbuilt. It's going to be exciting when it's like, why do we have that big road? We should probably narrow that so that we can reclaim some more of that property because it doesn't make sense to have that huge highway anymore because we have these little cars going now. Right. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to just like float everywhere or fly without anything, no room or no space. <laughs> I'm, in. I'm in. Bring on the Jetsons, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I forgot about those people. <laughs> At least we're not living in the Flintstone age. No, done with that one. <laughs> wow. Okay. Do you have um, anything you want to add? And then also, I've been uh, typing in here on the screen your website and to follow you on Ask Adam Torres, right? At Ask Adam Torres. Yeah. If you yeah, and if you just go to MrCenturyCity.com, everything's there. I have more social media buttons than you want to push. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. Don't worry. I love to play live. I love Periscope. Love obviously <laughs> YouTube. Um, Facebook's fun. I still don't understand it yet, but I know I have a page and I know it's getting better because people are starting to like it. So you can definitely go to Mr. Century City on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I know. And if, if we're just getting started, oh my gosh, imagine the possibilities. I don't I don't understand Facebook either all the way. Mm -hmm. I was like Facebook living the other day. I'm like, am I doing this right? And I don't know, but <laughs> imperfect action is what I was taught. <laughs> I was taught just do it. Nike taught me that in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> awesome. Well, do you have anything to add, Adam? No, everything's been great. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, awesome. Always a great time talking. Can't wait to uh, Wednesday, one of my favorite days of the week. Let's get our next show in and everybody just follow. Do you want to announce um, the details about our show on Wednesday? 
Oh, absolutely. So every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, it's the Gratitude Show live and myself and Tiffany T and whoever wants to join, it's a lot of fun. That's how, I mean, how to explain it. Just imagine a bunch of people getting on here and talking about gratitude, what they're grateful for, good things going on in their life. The whole concept is so simple. Just think about it this way. Media, everybody else is inundating us with all of these concepts that may or may not be the most healthy for us. Well, we're just trying to create a safe place, a platform somewhere that you can come and plug in and just be happy um, or just have that feeling of happiness or just that gratitude, whatever we want to name it doesn't have to be defined. Just think of it as positive people coming together to share. If you think that's something that's interesting to you, then we want to hear you. We want to hear your story. You want to hear what's going on in your life. Um, and if you don't want to talk in front of the camera, we want to read your chat. So chat us up. <laughs> it's all fun. Awesome. Well, again, um, Mr. Century City, it's such an honor and a pleasure to um, have you a part of this project. And thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy and I really appreciate your contribution. So thanks. thank you, you're Tiffany, welcome. as always. I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs> OK, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Inspiring People Doing Amazing Things. And stay tuned for our next interview. All right. Wonderful. Bye.